We're going to make a basic picture frame for this, uh, I won't say it's a valuable, monetarily valuable piece of art. Emotionally, Emotionally valuable piece of art. Uh, this is a print from Nicole's mom, but I have Nicole here to kind of yeah. give us the story. What's, what's the deal? So this is a print that my grandfather uh, got my grandmother, who I've never met. Her name was Rosemary. And this was when my mom lived in St. Charles, Missouri. And it was just something that my mom always saw on the wall. It was just, you know. Just part of the, just the, part the of home the, decor. Exactly. Sure. And so my grandmother passed when my mom was 16. And there were very few things that my mom was able to hold on to. But she held on to this. She told me, because I was like, how did I get it? <laughs> yeah. So it ended up, she stored it in a suitcase, tucked it away. And through moves, when she moved out to Arizona, she lost track of it. And my brother ended up with it. Mm -hmm. And so when he moved back to Missouri, he found it and said, hey, um, mom wants this. She's been looking for it for years. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it's seen better days. It's a little ratty, a little so, torn. But I'm hoping that a nice frame could like pull it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's got a lot of colors and stuff yeah, in it. I yeah. think if I keep the frame pretty basic, I don't get too carried away with the design, uh, it'll keep the focus in here on the imagery. Um, this kid has one hell of a set of chompers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Those perfect teeth. All right, so I'm going to be very careful with this and make sure I keep it's, it in good shape. You already ripped it. It's already ripped, but <laughs> it was, not by me. It was like that. Not by me. It was just in a yeah. cardboard, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there's... I'll do my best. Yeah. I use a lot of walnut in my projects, so my offcuts come in handy for small projects like this. I'll use the bandsaw to resaw a few of my thicker pieces in half. The pieces are then milled to about three quarters of an inch in thickness, and if they're a little bit thicker, that's okay with me. The parts are then cut to two and a quarter inches wide, but still oversized in length. Now there are a lot of different ways you can cut a miter. You could use the chop saw, you could use the table saw with a sled, you could use hand tools to do it. Um, I find that the miter saw, if it's well tuned, is probably the easiest because it's just a quick chop and you're done. So that's what I'm going to use today. Now, even though a miter is pretty straightforward, it can be really frustrating if your tools aren't calibrated perfectly because whatever you cut is actually multiplied times four as you go around to the four joints. So your error can compound and that can be a problem. So let me show you a very simple way to test your saw and if you need to make a slight adjustment, hopefully we won't have to, um, just using a piece of scrap plywood here. I'm gonna set the saw to 45. If I can actually see it, there we go. And now we'll just make one simple cut. Now if I take these two pieces, turn one over so that we can make a 90 degree corner, we can actually check the amount of error that we have based on how these come together. So we don't need to so much think about the 45 as we think about the 90 here. Now, making contact at the base, I am not making contact over here. So something is definitely off. So we got to figure out what part of the miter needs to be trimmed a little bit more in order to correct this error. So here's what I do. Keep it nice and square like this. Now, in order to get this piece to sit square, I rotate it this way slightly and that closes the gap. But what that does over here is open up a gap at the outside corner. So we need to remove material from this part of the cut. And that's actually something we could do with the saw. Now I can actually do a full calibration on this saw, which would involve, you know, adjusting this uh, detent plate here. But sometimes in the middle of a project, you just need to move forward. And I wanna get this locked in for an accurate result here. I'm not worried about calibration right now. So I am in my 45 detent. In order to remove a little bit of this material here, I have to go this way with the saw head. So I'm gonna come out of the detent and just tap it a little bit and then lock it in. Now we'll recut both pieces. We're gonna to have to cut this edge, see where we're at. All right, so let's try this one more time. Get those two together. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. So keep in mind, you could use this for whatever tool you're using. The simple adjustment method works pretty well. Clearly my miter saw needs a little bit of calibration, but we're in good shape for now. First, I cut a 45 on the end of each piece. Then 
Then I can measure and set up a stop block for both the long pieces and the short pieces. All right, so with all of those joints cut, we could do a little bit of a dry assembly here just to make sure everything is lining up nicely. Oh yeah, that's looking good. All right, worst case scenario, you see a problem, you could probably still fix it by making very light cuts on a few of these corners, but hopefully they all look good and you're good to proceed. Now, because miters aren't really the strongest joint in the world, I will be adding a little bit of reinforcement here with a domino. You could use a biscuit, dowels, anything you want. Uh, so what I've done is drawn some of the future things that are gonna happen here, because I wanna make sure this domino doesn't get put in the wrong spot or in a spot that winds up being exposed later. So in this area here, I have a safe zone. I've drawn my little profile, the decorative profile we're gonna cut. There's a little bit of a bevel cut here on the front face. And then I've got this double rabbit, which will house the glass and then the backer material. So with all that kind of, I'd say roughly, but it's pretty close to exact where we're gonna be. Uh, with that laid out, I can very easily see where I'm gonna have some space to install something like this little baby uh, five millimeter domino. So probably right here would be a center line, something like that. And centered this way. So now I could basically just set up a square for that same setting and transfer that to the rest of the joints. So next thing I want to do is add a decorative detail. It's kind of a double bead. Uh, this particular bit is specialized for picture frames, but you can use it for other things. Uh, and all we really need to do is get this bottom round over so that it kind of comes over this edge. And that looks like it's about where we want it to be. The bearing is also going to be useful because that helps us not go too far in. Uh, now I still want to use my fence, so I want to make sure that my bearing outside surface is lined up with the fence itself. Just going to bring the fence forward and then using a frame piece, kind of go back and forth on the bearing. And I'm just finding that sweet spot where as I move across the fence, the bearing is just kind of starting to move. Now to cut our bevel angle, we're basically going to want to leave about a quarter inch of material after our rabbits are cut that's gonna sit above the artwork. So I need to remove everything that is not that quarter inch, which takes us to right about there. And then I want the blade to come up under one of our bead profiles here, which is right up there. So I'm gonna kinda of eyeball this, sneak up on it. It might take me a couple of passes to get there. I don't even know what the angle is. Doesn't really matter what it is. So I'm pretty much set up for a fairly conservative cut. We can always take off more and change the angle if we need to. All right, so check this out. We are right up on that line. Probably just a hair of material to remove, but we can scrape and sand that later, which is something we would do anyway, uh, and go right up to the speed. All right, and the reason I kind of punched through and kept pulling back was because I really don't want to do this cut until I'm ready to do the final cut. Uh, every time I make this cut, I make my supporting material even smaller, right? So it gets a little bit nerve wracking. I wanna have as much support as possible through as much of the cut as possible. So now we can continue with the entire cut.
Normally, you'll never see me reach around to the back of the blade, it's just not safe. But sometimes in woodworking, we have to take calculated risks to get the job done. Alright, so next up we need to cut the double rabbit here. Uh, I've got a dado stack installed in a table saw and a sacrificial fence that allows me to bury some of this blade into the fence itself so we can cut right up to the edge of a workpiece. And it's a two-stage cut. The first one is going to be, you know, whatever your backing material thickness is. In my case, it's going to be about an eighth of an inch for some hard board. We'll make that cut and then we'll move the fence slightly so that we're only cutting the last quarter inch and that's where our glass is going to go. For me, that's going to be an additional, you know, roughly three thirty seconds of an inch, right? So two stages, make the cuts like so. All right, so now I've just moved the fence and raised the blade a little bit so we can make the second rabbit for the glass panel and the artwork. In my case, that's about 3.30 seconds more. Now, before we change any kind of settings there at the table saw, we want to make sure that we have allowed enough room for the artwork. So a little dry assembly is in order. No need for the tenons here. Gonna snug it enough that we can flip this guy over. And all I really want to do is make sure that the artwork fits inside this inner rabbit area. Get this old cardboard out of there. All right, it does indeed. Width looks good and the length looks good. Okay, so I think we are now safe to move on. Now to do the cleanup here, you could use a smoothing plane. You gotta be a little bit careful because you don't want any tear out, so you have to be prepared to take a nice light cut. But I think more importantly, what I'm concerned with is if I take too much material at any corner here, we might actually mess up how it meets up with the other surface, which means one could be a little bit higher than the other. So I think the safest bet is to just use a card scraper. So we can go right up into the corner of that bead. Oops. Now, I don't have a lot of clamping pressure here. I don't want to dent those sharp corners. So I do have cork on these things, but it can still easily move out of the way. Maybe I'll just pull the scraper. good. Just a light sanding to finish it off here. I'm going to ease this edge and lightly sand the edge that goes into the artwork. Just get rid of the machine marks and then round over this inside corner. Now the profile here is actually that's pretty darn clean but I will give it just a little bit of sanding. And these little uh, rubber doohickey things are actually really good for stuff like this. Okay, and this outside edge, well, we can get that after the frame is together. All right, so let's get this glue up going. Put a little glue in the mortises and on the tenons. And I'll be using uh, Typon's Dark Typon 2. It's just a good match for walnut. Um, by the way, if you don't want to buy something like Type Bond 2, uh, Type Bond 3 has a nice sort of grayish color that's a good match for walnut. You could also add dye to any of the other Type Bonds. Or you cannot worry about it because it'll probably be fine. 
And by the way, speaking of different types of glue, if you are interested in learning about the different types of uh, type on glues, what to use when, we got a video for that. I'll put a link down in the notes for you. Get in there, you punk. It's looking pretty good. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we're just gonna let that dry overnight. All right, well, I know I said uh, leave this overnight, but it's after dinner. My kids are crazy, and uh, this is where I come to ponder my life choices. So let's clean up a little glue. Now, in these corners, I'll just use a chisel. If you turn it upside down with a bevel down, you can just kind of scrape along each side. Just to loosen it up a little bit. And then that glue line should hopefully just kind of pop off. So now with the frame done, we can measure for the glass. That's gonna be the dimensions of this inner lower rabbit here. So I can get my width and then my length. And you basically wanna be about a 16th of an inch undersized. If you really try to nail this dimension and you cut your glass and it's too tight, well, resizing that glass is gonna be really difficult. So I like the idea of just being about a 16th undersized. Now here's a piece of glass. It's about 3 seconds of an inch in thickness. This is just replacement glass purchased, uh, got this from Home Depot, so uh, pretty straightforward stuff. To cut it, we just need a little glass cutter, which just provides a little score line and then we'll be able to snap it. So we just need to draw our measurements on here. Um, before I actually draw on there, I'm just gonna clean up where I'm gonna make my cuts. Just don't want any crap in the way of making a nice clean score line. If cutting glass scares you, well, it really shouldn't. It's actually quite easy. All right, so I'm gonna make one mark there. Same measurement. Mark up here. Now it does make me a little bit nervous with this small amount of material that we have to remove because we have to snap this. So if you have a bigger off cut piece, it tends to be a little bit easier. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to get clean enough results that this will work. And so let's do our length measurement. Yeah, it's not a bad idea to bring your frame in, drop it into a corner, and then just double check that your lines are doing what you think they're gonna do. Now if you grab the scoring tool, and you put the little cutter right on your line where you wanna cut it, then bring your straight edge over, because oftentimes you're not gonna be running the wheel against your straight edge, it'll be the outside housing that goes against the straight edge. Okay, that's looking pretty good, nice and straight. Now, this ruler can very easily slip, so a little bit of tape is just kind of a precautionary measure. If you have a lot of experience with this sort of thing, this is probably overkill for you, but I don't cut glass that often, and I don't want to have to buy another thing of glass because I screwed up. And the final precautionary measure is to put a little bit of oil on the wheel. Mineral oil, I've just got some honing oil. Now, right at the edge, I'm just gonna take a couple of passes because it's always a little tricky to start. And then from here, one even smooth pass, and you'll hear a little kind of swishy, crunchy sound. That's it. So now I'm gonna rotate this around to the edge of my workbench, put the score line right on the edge. Uh, you know, normally you could just use your hands for this. I'm a little bit concerned, 
about breaking it this way, but I do have gloves on to protect myself. Let's just see how it goes. It's not a bad idea to wear eye protection here as well. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, even with that small strip. So that went pretty well. This strip is even smaller, so let's hope it continues to go well. Before I move on, I'm gonna wipe away any glass shards. All right, same routine as before. Get lined up. All right, hopefully we'll do just as well on this one. It's really hard to get a grip, so I might just get some pliers. Get just a little bit of sandpaper to give me a little bit of grip and see if this works. All right, that actually made it quite a bit easier. Now this edge here is very jagged, a little bit rough, so hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. Don't go nuts here. Just break that sharpness. and it might help prevent some future cuts. And now with our frame in place, we could test the fit. It's pretty good, just a little bit of movement, I'm okay with that. All right, so now we can do the same sort of process, but cutting the hardboard backer. So now all we need to do is apply a little bit of finish and this sucker is done. Going with a hard wax oil. So after a couple of coats of finish, we could work on the final hardware we're going to need to install. So once the glass is in, the backer is in, we need a way to hold that backer in place. And there's quite a few different ways to do it. Here's what I'm going to use. These are just simple little rotating clips. So you screw them in and you've probably seen these on picture frames before. You could rotate them out of the way to take the backer off or put them in place to hold the backer in place. As for hanging, I've just got one of these doohickey thingies. So this is a... That little sawtooth design makes it very easy to hang and balance on the wall, and we can hang this up at the top using some more of these small screws. All right, now let's do the final assembly. A little bit of glass cleaner on there. Remove my greasy fingerprints. Now, if you notice that you've got a little bit too much wobble in your glass, if that's a problem, you can always use a little bit of caulk, a little silicone around the outside, just small dabs to kind of lock it in place and prevent it from slipping and sliding around. Now for the art. And the backer. Now these little clips are kind of pressure sensitive, so you see how easy they move right now. We'll snug them up once we get them in position. And there it is. Beautiful. Now, believe it or not, that frame is already on its way to Nicole's mom, and this is the frame that inspired it. Uh, I actually built this for a series in the Wood Whisperer Guild, and it's totally free. So if you've heard me talk about the guild in the past, this is something you might want to check out. Uh, go to thewoodwhispererguild.com. You can pick up uh, lessons on how to make all of the picture frames that you see here. Uh, we also have one on a dovetailed step stool that I think is pretty cool. And again, all for free, but you do have to sign up for it at the guild. All right, so thank you for watching. Hopefully this inspires you to build a nice frame for all the beautiful artwork in your life. Take care.